I love red wine, okay? Like if I could choose one thing to drink for the rest of my life, it would definitely be red wine. And then you ask yourself, Kate, why are you never drinking that on camera? What are you talking about? But you know what, today we're making an exception because it's fall. I'm gonna have something earthy and bold and it's gonna be delicious. This is my go-to wine. Like this is probably my most bought wine. It's the Bogle Petite Syrah. I think you can find this brand most anywhere. And it really is like one of the most reasonably priced bottles of wine that I can find that I really enjoy. So I think here in New York City, this is about like 12 or $13. Mm. Oof flavors of jammy blackberry, notes of rich spice, and a long decadent finish. Mm. Yeah, that's legit. So today is all of my favorites from the month of September. I've got makeup, I've got body care, I have got hair care, I have some show recommendations for you. First things first, I have to start out with my favorite foundation from the month, and that is definitely the Patrick Ta for face. This is the Creme Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. <laughs> Guys, I tried two different shades of this before I found my right shade. My correct shade is Fair 2. I thought it was actually going to be a cool tone because my skin is cooler tone, but this just worked out for me better. So again, I have the shade Fair 2. This is a true medium coverage and it is truly buildable. This is probably like the fullest coverage I comfortably wear. You can see how gorgeous it looks on camera. I'm wearing it on my face right now. Like, does this not just look absolutely flawless. I've applied it both with a brush and a sponge and I find both of them, you know, equally effective. It just kind of depends on what my skin looks and feels like that day. Today I used a brush and then I went over it with the sponge, which I really like that combination. I also set it with the powder and I do really go in with like a dense kabuki brush with this because I have found that it's a pretty fine powder, which I really like. I like that I have to like get in there if I want to keep building it up because that means that on the first pass it's going to go on really really naturally which is what I'm always looking for. If I want like a Goldilocks situation another thing I love to do is to take my Salt New York Sneaky Balm and mix it with this and it's like perfection. I will tell you with a cream foundation like this a little bit goes a long way. You do not need much at all. So I say start small and then you can always go in and add more. But because it does really already have a medium coverage the minute you put it on, I personally like to shear that out and just go in with a really, really light layer. Before I move on to the next product, I always like to mention that these products are gonna be linked down below and those are affiliate links. And if you shop through my links, that just means I get a small commission. So I thank you guys in advance. I also only feature vocally pro-choice brands on this channel so you can be guaranteed that anything I'm showing you is on my pro-choice brand list which can always be found on my Instagram which is just my handle Kate the Great Beauty. Moving on to a product that I mistakenly and sadly left out of my last favorites video. This is my e.l.f. brow lift. I've talked about this many times. This is 1000% a dupe for the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow freeze. I love this product. You can see I've already like made quite quite a dent in it. If you love a soap brow, if you like that feathery sort of like brushed up brow look, this is going to be your friend. I love this product. It gives me that very like soft, fluffy, it can also look very editorial brow look. Okay, alert the media, hold the phone, stop the damn presses because I finally found an eyeliner that I like that is pro-choice that is buttery as hell, that is not self-sharpening. I have many stipulations, okay? This is actually sent to me by Persona, so thank you so much to Persona. They sent me all three shades of their new eyeliner pencils, and this is the shade brown, just an espresso brown, which is what I used on my eyes today. Like I said, it's very soft. The pigment transfers very easily. I also took like a little um, smudge brush and kind of like softened the line, and it worked really well with that brush as well. So. This is definitely the one <laughs> so far. This is the one, this is what I'm gonna be grabbing for, for sure. This Tower 28 mascara can have its way with me. It is so good. I am wearing it today. I love everything about this. I have been using this nonstop. It's even grown on me since the first couple of times I wore it because I've learned how to use it the way it's supposed to be used, which is I basically like start a course at the root of my lashes and then roll it up so I get the most length and the most definition and the most denseness. Denseness? Density? Lushness? You know what I meant. The other thing that makes this 
absolutely next level and incredible is that this is made specifically for sensitive eyes and I can attest to the fact that this is the best sensitive eye mascara my mother has ever used. My mom has gotten very like dry sensitive eyes in the last few years. She can barely wear mascara. She even tried she tried everything. She's tried everything with for sensitive eyes. She's tried the Benefit Roller Lash. I think she might have tried the Thrive Mascara. Nothing worked. She just was gonna give up, you know? She's like, I just can't wear mascara. Well, this came to me right before I visited her in Vegas and I brought it with and I had her try it. She wore it out one night and she felt nothing. No irritation. She was like gobsmacked. So I actually left that mascara with her. I'm like, we're gonna keep you in stock with this. This is the one. And then I just went out and got myself another one when I got back. It is such a phenomenal mascara. I'm always looking for the mascara that does it all, right? I want the length. I don't want clumpiness. I want to be able to build it. I want my lashes to look feathery and thick. I want all the things. This gives me all the things. And if I'm a lazy biatch and I don't want to wear eyeliner, this kind of like doubles as an eyeliner because the base of my lashes looks so thick and black that I don't even really need it. I mean, not that you need eyeliner, but you know what I mean. Run Do Not Walk on this Tower 28 mascara. I am blown to smithereens. Okay, so moving on to blush, I have a cream blush. This is not new, but it, it's what I've been grabbing for. This is the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Blush in the shade Hope. The first person who ever turned me on to this, I mean, I think I may have even put it in another favorites video. I can't remember, but you know what? It's my favorite from the last month. The person who turned me on to this was Risa Does Makeup, and I just love this shade so much. I did double blush with it, so I have this on and then a powder blush that I'm gonna show you in a second. This is just like my perfect pink blush. It just looks so incredibly healthy. Like, look at that. It's kind of pinky peach. Oh, that's up my alley, damn. If this blush is too intense for you, if it is too pigmented, if it scares you, you can always use the hack that I love, which is to take any sort of a glow product like the e.l.f. Uh, Halo Glow, whatever liquid highlighter you want, and you just mix it into the blush and it's gonna give you this beautiful dewy blush where the pigment is not quite as intimidating and it's just a little bit more tamped down. And moving on to the powder blush I'm wearing, of course it is these damn Gucci blushes that just came out. So it is the shade Bright Coral. If you guys like a matte blush, these are gorgeous they're gorgeous of course the packaging is just like absolutely stunning as well like no surprise there right this is gonna be just like my go-to like gorgeous healthy flush shade and then i got this gorgeous rosy tan shade and guys I, you know i've talked about this in other videos but this is not a shade i would ever probably buy but now i am because i've learned i love like uh, mauvier blush tones, nude blush tones. This is absolutely stunning and I did wear it in a video so I'm gonna link that down below if you wanna check that out and see what it looks like on my skin. You know what, I am going to put more on because that's, you know, I'm extra. Mmm. Mmm. Okay, I know that's a lot. I know that's a lot. I wouldn't probably wear this much out but I went in hardcore to just show you kind of how gorgeous it is built up to this extent too. Like, right? If I really wanted to commit and go out and have like a fully glam night. What? What? Okay. This damn body wash from Lush gets me so excited that I'm excited to take showers. So this is the Lord of Misrule Shower Gel. It is a earthy, spicy black pepper and patchouli oil blend. Guys, this is my favorite scent from Lush. And I actually am kind of upset that they only come out with it <laughs> around Halloween. I try to stock up, but like, there's kind of no way to stock up for the entire year, but it is, oh, it makes my mouth water smelling it. And I think they have a candle in this scent that just came out. And they also have a body spray, which I think I'm gonna need to get my hands on. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some hair care now. I haven't talked about hair care in a while because I've kind of been changing my hair up. As I talked about in my recent video, I'm rocking the Mixie again. So that's basically a combination of a mullet and a pixie. I'm leaning into the scrunch, I'm leaning into the zhuzh, I'm leaning into the wave, and I'm like really digging on it. This is actually a cut that my mom gave me, which no surprise there because she's always given me like the best haircuts. So I had to get some new products to go along with this style. So the first one I want to mention is the JVN Air Dry Creams. This is Jonathan Van Ness's brand and I just, I love him. I mean, how can you not 
love that man. He also has just like dreamy ass locks. So this is exactly what I was looking for because I wanted something really lightweight, really hydrating that will work with fine hair. I have fine hair, but I have a lot of it. And with this product, a little bit goes a long way and that's exactly what it does. I also love the scent of this. Scent in hair products is very important to me. It's not overpowering, but it's just so fresh. So what I'll do is I'll go in with just a little bit of this on damp hair and I'll just like scrunch my hair. And then what I do is I go in with a volumizing spray. Now I have to say, I haven't checked into Briogeo. I just had this from another time when I was trying to rock the mixie and I couldn't commit. So I'm gonna try to get through this. I don't know that Briogeo is a vocally pro-choice brand. So if it's not, I'm definitely gonna be looking for a replacement, but I. I don't wanna waste this. And I do really like this. This is ginseng and biotin volumizing spray. It has no sulfates, no silicones, no parabens. And I just put it in this part of my hair because that's the part that I want there to be volume in the back. And then I just literally scrunch some more and I just let it air dry. Or sometimes I will uh, use a, a hair dryer. Once my hair is dry, then I go in with the Amica Undone Volume and Matte Texture Spray. I know this sounds like a lot of product, but this takes like seconds. And I just literally spray it right in the back again again, zhuzh it again. The goal is to just have like the flippiest sort of like volumized sort of like tossle hair I possibly can. And this combination of products has really got me there. I also love the brand Amika. I love their packaging. They were vocally pro-choice like from day one, I believe. So that really matters a lot to me. So I'm definitely gonna be trying to buy more Amika products. So now I'm gonna talk about a couple shows. One of them is something that I'm gonna demand everyone watches because it's one of the funniest things I've literally ever seen. The other is a fail, okay? So we'll end it with a fail. One of them is not new at all. I picked it up because literally one billion people screamed at me to watch this show and I never did. It's Broad City. Do you know this show? If you don't, you need to run, do not walk. I love both Abby and Alana on that show, but Alana Glazer, she is one of the funniest people I have ever seen. I think she is definitely on par with like Lisa Kudrow and Kristen Wiig, like those uh, female comedians who are so incredibly unique. Like no one is like Alana Glazer. Her delivery is like off the hook. She makes me LOL all the time. It is so incredibly funny. The hijinks that they get into are so well, I was gonna say they're so wild, they are, but also for New York City, they're not. They totally happen. So I was over at a friend's place the other night and we decided just for shits and giggles that we would watch the new Hocus Pocus 2. Um, this movie's terrible. It's terrible. And I love the original Hocus Pocus. I watch it every year. Actually, Randy had never seen it and I made him watch it last year. And he, after never having seen it as a child, actually really liked it as an adult. <laughs> the first one, let's be honest, it stands the test of time. For what it is, it is just like an awesome, fun, like kids Halloween movie that was done really, really well with really talented people. Now they brought back those same talented people, but can we just like stop remaking things that were so, so good in their own right and now we're just like ruining it by going back to it? Why are we remaking all these things that were like classics? Can we stop, or like making sequels to them? Like no one, well, I don't, I can't say that. Maybe people did ask for this, but whoever asked for this should be slapped. I mean, what is, it's like 30 years later, isn't it? Like, I think the first Hocus Pocus came out when I was, I don't know, like nine or 10. It was a long time ago. It just felt tired. It felt forced and tired and it bummed me out. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that it's not gonna be a fun hate watch, okay? I'm not gonna tell you that you can't make an awesome drinking game out of that. Listen, I know it's a hot take, okay? I know pe some people are gonna get real upset with me, but you know what? I'm upset with Hocus Pocus. What have you done? Okay, guys, so that wraps up this favorites video. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said before, everything is going to be linked below for your shopping ease. Please subscribe. Please give this a thumbs up. It really, really helps my channel. You guys are the best. Please be safe out there and cheers till next time. Bye. Okay, you know, the wine teeth isn't too bad this time. Mm -mm.